Hey, I'm Jake Mace. I call myself the vegan athlete. This is my neighborhood. And I thought you guys who are new to my channel, maybe you've been with my channel for a while, I thought you'd want to see a little sneak peek of what my neighborhood looks like and a full tour, summer tour, 2017, of what I'm growing in my front, my backyard. I grow an entirely edible landscape. Everything is edible or medicinal in some way or another. Let's go. My neighborhood's in the Phoenix area and it's a typical 1970s neighborhood. Nothing too special or ritzy about it. And if you guys can see all the neighborhoods behind me, they're just typical Phoenix neighborhoods. You know, they have the rock front yard landscaping. Everyone's got like desert willow trees or fairy dusters. They got rocks and California fan palms. Maybe a, a pine tree every now and then. And that's kind of how people have their yards in Phoenix. Some people have grass. And I don't understand that. Why do you live in the desert and have grass? Come on over here. And if I walk a bit in front of you guys, what you can see is my house is this one down the way here. It looks a little more green. So when I bought the house, I would say it was six years ago, 2011. I decided I wanted to plant a few fruit trees in my backyard. And that led to a few more, and that led to a garden. And that led to uh, multiple raised beds. And now we have a food forest in the city on just one third of an acre. So let's check out the front yard first. Come on in to what I call Longevity Gardens. I'll give you guys the full tour of what I'm growing. Share this video, hit the like button, follow me on social media, Jake Mace Tai Chi. Join my Facebook group, Urban Gardening in Arizona. And you can get seeds from me that will work in your garden at seedbankbox.com. It's my monthly seed program, seedbankbox.com. If you guys have any questions, comment down below. This is gonna be a long video, I would say over an hour. Let's get started, come on in. So first off, you guys can see right here, we've got these trees that are providing a dense canopy of shade. They're called moringa trees. And when I teach gardening workshops, I teach my gardening students, there are 13 trees that I suggest every Phoenix area grower, every Southern California, maybe Las Vegas, Texas, hot climate growers, Tucson, they should grow these 13 trees. Moringa is one of the 13. These guys, if you guys follow my channel, you saw that a few months ago, maybe two months ago in March, I cut the whole trees down and this is just two months worth of growth from stumps. So come on underneath. It's real nice underneath here. And the Moringa trees are edible. The leaves are edible. They're like a multivitamin. They're super high in nutrients. You can also eat the flowers. They're high in nutrients as well. But I'd rather cook with them, put them in smoothies, like fruit smoothies. Ooh, that flower was sweet. And you can also eat the drumsticks. They call it drumstick trees sometimes too. If you guys take a few steps back, I got a tree here called a carambola or a star fruit tree. And literally this tree I've pulled off over 40 star fruits this year, and it was his first year with a good crop. This one is not totally ripe yet, but I'll pick it and eat it for you guys. There's still 10 or so more on the tree, and I've had this guy in the ground about three years. So I'm finding that carambola or star fruit works really well in the Phoenix area. But the trick is to give it friends. The moringa trees are the friends of the star fruit. And down below, I've got all these wood chips. See this stuff? That's what I use as my secret gardening fuel. If we go down here by the roots of the tree and I dig down, it gets blacker and blacker in there. When I go beneath the wood chips, the soil looks like this. So that's broken down wood chips with worms in it, roly polies, mycelium, mycorrhizae, all kinds of microscopic and bug civilization. And that's why I've gotten some of these fruit trees to work with lower water usage because of the mulch. I have diverted 55 landscape truckloads of wood chips so far to my yard. And a landscape truckload is four or five tons. It'll be a four to five foot tall pile that spans the entire length of your driveway. And I've had over 55 of those loads dumped on my driveway so far all for free and that's my secret to conserving water and growing healthy fruit trees in the phoenix area I like star fruit back over here i got this tree called a jujube this is also on my list of my top 13. jujubes do fantastic here and this guy just came out of his winter dormancy they're deciduous 
which means they lose their leaves in the winter time. And he's loaded with fruits right now that'll get bigger and bigger till they're about golf ball size. Once they're golf ball size, they'll be green and crunchy like an apple. But I let them dehydrate on the tree till they're red and shrivelly like a date. When they're red and shrivelly and almost donut-like consistency, that's when I love to eat them. And they're great trail mix food. Next to this guy is a new fig tree I planted about a year and a half ago called the Texas Blue Giant Fig. It was just a little tiny stick. And it's getting his figs for the spring here and they'll be ripe in a couple months. And they literally are a gigantic fig that is one of my favorite figs in my yard. I have six different varieties of fig tree growing in my yard. Over here I've got these cactus or cacti that are a columnar cactus called the Peruvian apple. And for those of you wanting to grow edible drought tolerant things like cactus and succulents and palm trees, the Peruvian apple cactus is one of my favorites. It's a really delicious cactus fruit that you eat. The cactus itself goes to flower, then fruits, and the inside is like a kiwi that's white. You spoon it out like you would a dragon fruit and it's so delicious and they grow great here in the Phoenix area. This is a tree that I got with my friend Seamus O'Leary with Seamus O'Leary's Tropical Fruit Trees. We went on a garden trip together and we brought this one to my yard. And I haven't talked about it till now because I wasn't sure if I was gonna make it or not. It's called a Java Plum or called a Jamon or a Jamun. Is that right? Jamun. Yeah, Jamun. And this Java Plum has done very well. It's been in the ground now for almost two years. It's got a good leaf structure, got a good canopy starting, and I think I would start to recommend this. This is a nice tree that takes the wind, takes the cold, takes the heat, and grows pretty well. And next to the Java Plum is my apricot tree, and this guy is probably about one week away from being ripe, and these apricots are fantastic. I am so thrilled with this tree. I think it's a gold-kissed apricot, and I planted this with a research team from ASU doing a report on my yard. And these guys will get to be very, very orange. And then in about a week from now, every morning I wake up, I'll walk outside, there'll be 10 or 20 apricots sitting on the ground like an offering from the gods to the vegan athlete every morning. There's thousands of them. Within three weeks, they're all gone. So the ones that I can't eat raw, I put in bags and I put in the freezer and I have them all year long as homegrown apricots in my smoothies. This guy's a stone fruit tree. He goes deciduous in the winter time. And I pruned him so he has the fruit kind of reachable. See how all the fruit is reachable? And when you prune your trees for home agriculture usage, when you prune your trees not to become huge shade trees, but instead to become, you know, home orchard style trees, the birds eat less of the fruit because when it's reachable by you, the birds don't touch it as much. And I'm always planting more new things. This is a Parfianca pomegranate. I've got bigger granadas or pomegranates in the backyard, but this one's brand new. So even though I have a lot planted now, I'm still trying to find new areas in my yard to plant things in. This is kind of a dead area. And this Parfianca comes highly recommended by Dave Wilson Nursery. So I'm going to be trying to grow this one and hopefully in two years from now, I'll have fruit off of this guy. I've purchased fruit trees of all different cost sizes and ages. This one I got for 99 cents from Baker Nursery in time before they closed. It's called a bay leaf tree. If you look at all these leaves here, this is the same kind of bay spice you would buy in the store. So if you're making a curry or a soup or a stew or a stir fry, you can throw some bay in there to season it. And I have this whole tree sitting right outside my front door for easy access to the kitchen. It was 99 cents and now it's a beautiful tree three years later. Still in my front yard, I have this hedge of citrus. I saw my friend Greg Peterson with urbanfarm.org growing a citrus hedge in his front yard and I wanted to have the same thing. So I got a tangerine tree here, a grapefruit and a mandarin. And these guys produce a ton of fruit. I still have tons of grapefruits just hanging off my tree here and they're protected by the leaves. So I'm still eating two or three grapefruits a day. And ever since I was on the wrestling team in middle school, high school and college, I always love eating grapefruit as a way to keep my weight in check for weigh-ins. And so now as an adult, I love including one or two grapefruits a day into my diet because it helps me to stay trim. And I just think grapefruit's a great cleansing food, especially when you eat your own that you grew at home. Okay, this is still my front yard and this used to be a long driveway that had a lot of wasted space. So we made the decision to turn half the driveway, the back half into a front yard garden and the front half keep as a dirt driveway. 
So there's a lot of stuff being grown here in the front yard. This bed looks like crap right now. So come on nice and close. It's got New Zealand spinach growing everywhere. I get the New Zealand spinach from either seedbankbox.com or from the Baker Creek Seed Company, rareseeds.com. And it's starting to put off its little seed pods that will turn brown and be the seeds for the next generation. In the middle of all the New Zealand spinach is all this grass. And I'm constantly battling grass in certain beds, like anybody else does, but I don't mind it because it's food for my chickens, it's food for my tortoise. And last year, when I was cleaning out one of the beds, I found over 20 praying mantids. Praying mantises? Praying manti? Praying mantid, I think. In the grass, they were using it as a cover. So even the grass has benefits I'm not saying let your garden get taken over, but don't stress if you get a little bit of weed or grass once in a while because the bugs that are beneficial, like praying mantis, love to hide in it. And underneath all this New Zealand spinach is potatoes. I grew them over the fall. There's a video on my YouTube channel here that shows my whole potato growing experience. And now if I just dig my hands down into the dirt here, watch this. I just keep pulling out potatoes all day, every day, Hashtag potatoes for days. Hashtag spud life. <laughs> I mean, there are hundreds of them in here. And every meal I want some potatoes, I just walk up in my front yard, dig in the dirt, and I find some awesome potatoes to put in my meal that day for lunch or dinner. And I can make free vegan food here at home. I literally went to Whole Foods, bought some organic potatoes. I chitted them on the counter. And then I put them in the raised beds and they overwintered and I made a whole YouTube video about it on my channel here showing the whole experience. So check it out. It's a great video and I hope it inspires you guys to also grow some potatoes in your front yard. Look at that one. It's so nice. So I don't have a garage. I just have a 1970s carport, but I decided to grow a living garage on the side of the carport because this used to be direct sun baking on my car. So I grew blueberry grapevines up the wall of my carport mixed in with passion fruit vines. So I got passion fruit and blueberry grape all working together. This attracts the butterflies in like crazy. I've even got some Christmas lima beans that are coming back year after year on their own. Those were originally bought and planted in the bulk section of Whole Foods. They're the purple splattered lima bean called Christmas lima beans. And so between the grapevines, the passion fruit, and the lima beans. I've got a whole wall of life here that I haven't watered in two years. I think it just gets residual water from the raised beds, but haven't watered these grapes in two years. They just grow like crazy. They have grapes all off them. So great way to grow food at home is to grow grapevines. This bed, I've got this plant of uh, fennel. It's been here for two and a half years. It was from my friend Suzanne Velarde with VillardiGardens.com. If you're local in Phoenix, go to VillardiGardens.com and find out where she's at. Like Summer Winds Nursery has Velarde Garden plant starts. And look at the bulbs on this fennel. They look so good. There are so many of them. Look how many bulbs are in there. I mean, that's some high quality food in there. And I just walk out and eat some of the greens. They taste like black licorice. Can cut the bulb and I always leave one bulb to be the mother for the next season. This raised bed is getting some grass, but it's also full of potatoes. So in about two weeks, all the grass will be gone here and I'll have my okra, eggplant, and sweet peppers being grown here. This raised bed here was from my friend Greg Peterson with urbanfarm.org. He gave me some of the, the sunchoke roots, also called Jerusalem artichoke roots from his garden in Phoenix. And I put them in the ground. And now look at these plants on top. These are the plants that grow on top of the soil. And the sunchoke, also called Jerusalem artichoke, is like a potato that grows beneath the soil. But they make a sunflower on top. So once these guys get about this tall, they'll grow sunflower heads. And they smell amazing and they look amazing and really bring some life to my front yard garden. Behind it, this is an eggplant plant. Is it an eggplant or an eggplant plant? That's um, a long, slender, green variety from Suzanne Velarde that's ripe when it's green. And these guys are a little overripe, but this one's great. And I've been harvesting these just for stir-fry, bruschetta, and baba ganoush. And this guy's been in the ground for over a year and a half. He overwintered successfully this year because our winter was so warm in Phoenix. If you guys look behind this raised bed, I've got these two trees. And this one's one of my favorites. 
that I never had eaten before I started gardening. It's called a guava or a guayaba. And this one was from the plant sale that the Arizona Rare Fruit Growers put on every year in the spring and the fall. And look, he's flowering right now. Look at the, the guava flowers. They look kind of like a firework, don't you think? Over here, this branch has a few of them. People ask me, what does a guava taste like? And I say, kind of like the consistency of a really juicy pear, but it has more of a tropical taste, like tropical juice you would get in the store. But when you eat your own, it's so much better. And I think these guavas are in my top 13 as well because they grow so great here in Phoenix. They take the cold, they stay evergreen like a citrus. They pretty much can thrive in Phoenix like a citrus tree does. And next to the guava, this is a white guava, over here is a sapote. And this one's a white sapote, I think called a Vernon sapote. And the cool thing about this one is that he hasn't fruited in the last three years since I planted him three or four years ago. But this year he did. Let me show you. If I lift up the skirt here on the, on the sapote, I've got my first ever sapote fruits here hanging off the tree. They're gonna get a lot bigger than that when they're ready. This branch has a ton of them. Look at this branch. He's loaded with fruits. There's probably 10 fruits on this one branch alone, all inside here. There's probably about 50 sapotes, if I look all underneath the tree in here. They're all getting about, you know, I would say golf ball size right now, and I'm super excited to eat my first ever white sapotes in my yard because I haven't had a sapote fruit yet. This is really exciting to me, and look at how I use the wall here as a shade screen for this white sapote. And now, three or four years in, this guy is extending his leaves and foliage into the light. And I really suggest if you're in a hot climate like Southern California, Arizona, Tucson, Phoenix, Las Vegas, Texas, Florida maybe, use your house, use a wall, use a structure or use a parent tree to protect your newly planted trees. I found that people that plant a fruit tree right up against the house or against the wall or right up against another uh, mature tree, they have a lot of success because the tree can be protected by the wind and the intense heat and the cold. And once it's mature, it grows into the light like this sapote is doing right now. When I was building the infrastructure for my garden, for my edible landscape, I oftentimes was singing the Willy Wonka song. Come with me and you'll be in a world of my creation. And so I have some uh, Chinese here. This is the Shou Hua Yuan the longevity gardens and come with me.